Hi, my name is JD with Natix.com, and today I'm going to show you how to download and install Ubuntu. First things first, we need to go to Ubuntu.com and download the ISO image. It'll pop up, just hit save. I'm going to save it to my desktop. Once the download is complete, you can go ahead and close out of this. And we need to go to a website to download a program to be able to burn an ISO image. The program that I use is called Image Burn. Uh, it's at imgburn.com. So all you have to do is scroll down here, and then you're going to download it. Choosing the first mirror. I'm going to save this also on my desktop. Now we're going to install Image Burn. This is a completely free program. just going to close out of that. Get rid of all the windows here. We're going to go to our Ubuntu ISO image so we can open this with image burn. And it's pretty much as simple as that is all you're going to do is burn this to this now. You need to have a CD in the drive. Right now it says no writers detected. That's because I'm actually in a virtual machine of Windows inside of Ubuntu to demonstrate how to download. When your device is detected, it will show up here and you just hit burn or write and that will burn the image to the disk. Then what you need to do next is restart your computer and look in the BIOS mode for boot menu or setup where you can go in and you need to select to start up your CD-ROM drive before your hard drive starts and that will be demonstrated. So go ahead and restart your computer. My boot menu is F12, and now I'm going to select my CD-ROM drive. And here we are at the main installation screen. I'm going to press Enter, so I go with English. Now you can try Ubuntu right here without any changes to your computer. I advise this for someone that's never used Ubuntu before. but. If you're ready to install, you can go ahead and hit install Ubuntu. Now you'll be presented with this screen. We're going to go ahead and pick English.
My time zone is Eastern. Selecting your keyboard layout, you could just pick USA, leave it on the default one at a time. Okay, here we're presented with the partitioner. And what's going to happen is we need to decide right now whether we want to put Ubuntu alongside of Windows so that way when we first start our computer we can either choose to select Ubuntu to start up or Windows to start up. I highly recommend that you use a dual boot feature if you're not a big Linux person yet. Okay, now that we're at the per edit. Now that we're at the partitioner screen, we can select Ubuntu to run side by side Windows. What this means is, when we first start our computers, we can select to either run Ubuntu or to run Windows. That's up to you. You can hit erase and use the entire disk, and is what that's going to do is wipe out your Windows completely and only install Ubuntu. Or we could select what it's on now, install them side by side. Right now, where it's at, my hard drive is a 35 gigabyte hard drive. Most hard drives are going to be way bigger than this. I'm running this in as a virtual server to demonstrate here. So right now I'm going to leave it where it's at. Just make sure you check this. You don't want this too small and you don't want Ubuntu too small. So right there they're about the same, getting close to around 16 gigabytes a piece. So we can go ahead and go forward. At this screen, it's going to ask you what your name is. You can use anything that you want. I'm going to go ahead and type in JD. So it's suggesting me a username of JD. You can pick a different username from your actual name. And, and you can go ahead and pick a password. And just choose a password, one that you're going to remember. And then it's asking what is the name of this computer. JD Laptop 1 works for me. Now you could select right here to have Ubuntu log in automatically. Same thing as Windows. Either when Windows first starts up, you can either have it where you put a password in or it just goes straight to your desktop. This is up to you. I rather log into my computer. It's telling me now that I entered a password that consists of less than eight characters, which is considered too weak. You should choose a stronger password. This is completely up to you. It doesn't matter to me. With this feature, you can migrate your documents and settings from Windows into Ubuntu. And what this does is it pretty much takes your My Documents folder and adds it as your home folder in your Ubuntu desktop. This is completely up to you. You don't have to do this. If you have a lot of files like music and stuff that you keep on your Windows machine, this might be a good idea. But if not, then it's it's okay. It's, you don't have to do it. It's not required. I'm not going to do it. What I'm going to do is speed up this video so that we can get right to the end. When the installation is complete, the next thing you're going to be prompted with is to restart your computer. And as soon as you click on restart, then it's going to ask you to remove the CD and press enter. And then just go ahead and do that. Once the computer restarts, then you're going to come to this screen. This is your grub bootloader screen. This is going to give you the option to either pick Ubuntu or to pick Windows. Use your arrow keys to pick which installation you want to boot. Right now we want to boot Ubuntu, so we would just hit enter. Or if we wanted Windows, we could just go down to Microsoft Windows and then hit enter. But for now, we're going to pick Ubuntu. We hit enter. And this will boot up the Ubuntu operating system. Now you'll be prompted to log in. I'm going to go ahead and click my name. Put in my password. Hit enter or log in. And now you'll be logged in to your Ubuntu desktop. That is it for the installation process. Don't forget to check out www.matics.com.